Hello everyone. Myself is Sri Induja, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering, Hindustan College of Engineering and Technology. In this session, we are going to study the manufacturing process of ammonium phosphate. The course outcome for this topic is to select the raw material for phosphate-based fertilizer manufacturing, which means at the end of the session, you will be able to describe raw materials, chemical reactions and process flow sheets involved in manufacturing of ammonium phosphate. As well as properties and uses of ammonium phosphate also, you will see in this chapter. The outcome or the learning outcome is to describe the conversion process for the given MAP and DAP. So MAP is nothing but monoammonium phosphate and DAP is nothing but diammonium phosphate. Coming to ammonium phosphate, so here we will see about the, what is ammonium phosphate formula and what it is consists of and what are the types of ammonium phosphate. So the ammonium phosphate formula is NH4 thrice CO4 also known as ammonium orthophosphate is the salt of ammonia and phosphoric acid. So it consists of anion and cation that is ammonium cations and phosphate anion. It is water soluble and aqueous solution on boiling when it loses ammonia. So there are two types of ammonium phosphate. One is monoammonium phosphate and the formula is NH4H2PO4 and diammonium phosphate formula is NH4 twice HPPO4. Okay. And coming to the grades of ammonium phosphate, so the ammonium phosphate is available in two grades as I said earlier. MAP is one of the type and DAP is one of the type. So the basic difference in MAP and DAP is the concentration of ammonia. So coming to MAP, there is monoammonium phosphate. The nitrogen content consists in this uh, monoammonium phosphate is of about 11 to 12 percentage. And anhydrous ammonia added to liquid phosphoric acid gives the product as a monoammonium phosphate. So when ammonia plus phosphoric acid reacted means then we will get monoammonium phosphate. So in this fertilizer high content of P2O5 of about 55 percentage and uh, coming to diammonium phosphate so the nitrogen content in diammonium phosphate is of about 16 to 18 percentage and uh, 20 to 21 percentage of phosphorus so that is 46 percentage P2O5 is formed in diammonium phosphate. So the basic raw materials in manufacturing process of ammonium phosphates are so one is uh, ammonia and another one is phosphoric acid. So these two are the basic raw materials used in this ammonium phosphate manufacturing. So the basic is diammonium phosphate or monoammonium phosphate. So the reactions, the chemical reactions involved are simply uh, the neutralization reaction. So that is ammonia neutralized phosphoric acid which gives ammonium phosphate as salt. So here in the first reaction you can see that ammonia plus phosphoric acid which gives the product of monoammonium phosphate and second reaction you can see that ammonium plus monoammonium phosphate which gives diammonium phosphate. As you can observe here in the first reaction and second reaction in first reaction MAP contains only one molecules of ammonia while in second reaction DAP contains I mean uh, diammonium phosphate contains 
two moles of ammonium. That's why it is called as diammonium phosphate. Now we will see how this reaction are converted into manufacturing of ammonia in practical form. Here you can observe the process flow diagram for the manufacturing of ammonium phosphate. So here you can able to see the first reactor, second reactor and third reactor which are used for manufacturing or neutralization of the phosphoric acid with the help of ammonia. Liquid form of ammonia that is liquid ammonia or we can say as, say as uh, liquid ammonia is spread through the bottom of the reactor. So it can see that liquid ammonia is given as feed in the reactor 1 at the bottom. While the phosphoric acid is passed from the top of the reactor. So in the diagram you can able to see that H3PO4 which is phosphoric acid is sent as a feed in the three reactors. So these are passed from the top of the reactor which are known as CSTR that is continuous stirred tank reactor where monoammonium phosphate and diammonium phosphate are produced in this reactors. If we need to produce diammonium phosphate means the concentration of ammonia required is large quantities than the ammonia is also introduced from the bottom of the second and third reactor. So here you can see that liquid ammonia is also fed to the reactor 2 and reactor 3 in the bottom of the column. And the excess quantity of ammonia is collected from the top of the reactor and recycled to the first reactor. So ammonia recycled to the process in the top of the column. You can able to see that the recycle process is done and as the neutralization reaction takes place in this reactors, the product mixture containing ammonium phosphate is mixed with the potassium chloride that is KCl and fed to the granulator. Their granules of ammonium phosphate is produced and dried in a dryer. So the dryer is used to remove the moisture content around 1% of water vapor or water molecules. Then this dried ammonium phosphate is screened and sent to a storage tank. So there is a three types of screening process in the screening column. So this screened uh, ammonium phosphate are sent to the, the granules are sent to the storage tank or storage area uh, like uh, silica or jute bags etc. So this may be stored in the silica bags or jute bags or in storage tanks. Then we will study the properties of ammonium phosphate. So the properties is are the molecular formula for uh, ammonium phosphate is NH4H2PO4 and finally the appearance of the ammonium phosphate is a white crystal and uh, the odor is colorless and the melting point of uh, ammonium phosphate is 190 degrees Celsius and the density is 1.803 gram per mole and uh, solubility is moderately soluble in water and finally the pH is of about 4 to 4.5. Coming to the process as I explained earlier with the diagram the quantities of phosphoric acid and ammonia in neutralization station steps are different in both monoammonium phosphate and diammonium phosphate because in monoammonium phosphate 
uh, ammonia to phosphoric acid ratios of about 0.6 in neutralizer and 1 in a granulator while for diammonium phosphate 1.4 in neutralizer and 1.0 in granulator so that's why it is different and the exothermic reaction heats the slurry nearly about 130 degree of boiling point and uh, so nh3 losses will be there of about uh, less than 3 percentage and after adding the potassium chloride it is moved to the rotating drum granulator and the granules are sent to the dryer and due to drying process the moisture content is removed of about 1 percentage at the time of 10 minutes contact with air internally at 1500 degrees celsius so these dry products are sent to the screening process and finally it is sent to the storage tank for some other bagging process so coming to the uses of ammonium phosphate so the ammonium phosphates are used in a different uh, application so that are high effective non chloride nitrogen and phosphate compound fertilizer in agriculture it contains totally 73 percentage of fertilizer element so this nitrogen plus c2o3 and may be used it as a basic raw materials for nitrogen phosphate and potassium fertilizer so it is also used in the flame proofing and plant nutrition solution and it also used in the manufacturing of yeast vinegar yeast foods and bread in crops it is also used in the buffer solution and in analytical chemistry also and the another application is it is also used in the fire prevention agent for fabrics and timber and paper as well as in the fire prevention coating and also it is used in the food grade uh, like uh, fermentation agent and nourishment agent So these are the uses of ammonium phosphate. So ammonium phosphate fertilizers are highly soluble in water and fast acting in soil to give nitrogen and phosphorus in chemical combination. Thank you all.